Hi guys and welcome. Um, today we're going to be talking about soil um, and specifically soil for cacti and succulents. So I thought I'd come to a neutral ground. Uh, we're here in Fairchild Tropical Botanical Garden um, because I wanted to be in a place where everything that you're going to see planted was put there by a professional botanist uh, and someone who has knowledge and working experience with plants. Uh, so we're gonna basically go through and look at some plants and uh, really get down into the soil and check out what they're planted in and we're gonna talk a little bit about geology also uh, I'm gonna give you basically the reasons why I choose to grow my cacti and succulents in mostly inorganic or mineral media and I'm gonna let you decide what you think uh, is best for your plants based on you know the science and the facts that I'm going to share with you because um, I found that on the internet there seems to be two different very distinct camps <laughs> or opposing ideologies when it comes to soil structure for cacti and succulents uh, we have the mineral inorganic media camp and the fully organic uh, no mineral or just a little bit of mineral to provide drainage camp and we're going to talk about exactly what organic media is first of all and that's why we're here where the big arborescent plants or the trees are uh, oh there goes a squirrel I don't know if you guys saw it because uh, basically this is what organic media consists of it's anything that came from an organism that's why it's organic it came from something that was once living for the most part as you can see on the ground there are tons and tons of leaves from all the foliage from these arborescent plants that's uh, fallen off and this is what constitutes most of that organic media the leaves and animal droppings and basically any other plant or animal related matter falls to the ground where it is digested or consumed or processed by fungi and bacteria and then it turns into potential food source or energy source for plants all over again so it's like a cycle um, but that's where the, that's where the issue arises I guess because people then seem to think that organic media is the only source of uh, these nutrients and that's just not the case um, if we talk about inorganic media or mineral sub substances or minerals Mineral deposits are nothing but organic media that has been decomposed and processed over millions and millions of years. So in essence, there is a form of organic media in mineral deposits. So it is, uh, it is incorrect to think that just because you have a mineral substrate or a min mineral potting mix, there is no source of energy or no source of nutrients for your plants because there is. Cacti and succulents have evolved over millions and millions of years to work together with fungi and bacteria at the, the root system level to be able to process nutrients that come from these mineral deposits rather than directly from organic media like plants that live in the forest or in the jungle where they do have access to tons and tons of organic material that keeps falling year after year in the desert as you can imagine plants don't have that luxury they don't get exposed to tons and tons of organic material because there just is not a vast population of plants or animals in the desert um, to be providing this organic content so so you can see it, we're starting to get into the succulent section here and the soil definitely changed a lot so you can see this is mostly rock um, and deep underneath the rock I just it just feels like more rock um, and then this is some uh, looks like limestone or coral deposit another mineral but there just does not seem to be a lot of organic content or organic material in the mix where these drought tolerant plants are uh, the reason for that is we are in South Florida and we get about 60 inches of rain per year and organic material combined with moisture is is just creates a suitable environment for fungi and things like rot to produce and that is exactly what you don't want when it comes to your root systems and the reason for it is the more organic material you have in your mixture the more 
um, moisture it will be able to retain after uh, you water so what happens is these uh, fungi or these um, spores are able to reproduce and germinate and it's just a more hospitable environment for them as opposed to mineral mixes that dry up very quickly um, and oxygen is able to get down to the root structures a lot faster and a lot more efficiently and that's what prevents rot when you have good ventilation and good aeration which means um, the exchange of oxygen in there in in your root systems uh, the less prone to rot your plants are going to become so what happens is you have to end up walking a fine line between enough organic content to retain some moisture in your mix if you do live in a desert climate and running the risk of rot uh, when you start adding too much organic material so my recommendation is sticking to 10 percent and under for organic material um, and everything else should be inorganic or mineral content that provides good drainage and nutrients in the form of uh, clay or other mineral substances that are beneficial to cacti and succulents um, for that reason i when it comes to my soil mix that i sell uh, it contains no organic material whatsoever and the reason for that is organic material is very easy to come by or very easy to find locally if you just go to uh, maybe a home depot or a walmart it's very easy to find uh, some organic potting mix you can maybe buy even some garden soil all you need to look for is that it contains no peat moss i've found that peat moss is very detrimental to root structures of cacti and succulents because once it dries out completely it is very difficult for it to um, catch any sort of moisture again so it's better to just go ahead and look for something that has no peat moss in it the idea is that you can practically grab any one of these uh, big store potting mixes and mix 10% into my uh, all inorganic potting soil and sort of make uh, something more hospitable for your climate if it is very dry where you live uh, and otherwise you can just use it 100% uh, inorganic. I always recommend you try 100% inorganic first and if you start seeing any sort of uh, wilting or anything you could try adapt or rather changing up your watering schedule a little bit to try to suit the soil. Obviously you're going to have to start watering a little bit more frequently but you do have to do so gradually and very slowly. Um, cacti for the most part live in a different time scale than us uh, they do live for hundreds of years in some cases some cases even longer we just don't know for sure but what this means is they don't like any abrupt changes if you cause any sort of abrupt change to the culture or to the environment that you have your plants growing in, they might go into shock and they might go into shock just due to that abrupt change rather than because of the new ingredient you're putting into the whole culture system these are some um, pachypodium they're beautiful huge um they look like palm trees but they're actually succulents um and they come from madagascar and as you can see they are planted in 100 percent rocky um gritty very high drainage material there's no organic stuff in here there is some granular, I don't know if you can see it, but granular like slow release fertilizer in there. And that's not uncommon. Lots of people like to use um, slow release uh, fertilizer with inorganic media because you always have that constant like feeding into your, into your roots at a very low uh, percentage. Obviously you want something that's for cacti and succulents that is very low in nitrogen um but basically yeah you can you can see that these are all planted in nothing but inorganic mineral material or rocky material um so i think the best or the optimal is actually a mixture of inorganic and organic but just very low organic content low to no organic content really um so yeah guys like always if you have any comments if you like to use tons of organic content don't feel like this is an attack on you whatsoever um but you know based on my personal experience i don't i don't like to use organic material i see that it does create uh plumper and greener plants 
but one analogy that I like to use when it comes to uh, purely organic material for cacti and succulents is sort of like McDonald's for your kids. <laughs> um, yeah, if you if your kids eat a lot of McDonald's, they will get larger in size, and that could look to some people, uh, or it may seem like healthier when when you're larger in size, but it's not necessarily the truth. Uh, McDonald's is definitely uh, not the best source of nutrition for children and the same goes for purely organic content in uh, potty mixes if you ask me personally I don't recommend it but if, if you do use purely organic content and it's working for you by all means continue doing so continue to use it um, you might want to try something different just to see how your plants will grow differently and more flat and um, they will exhibit some of the, the characteristics that only come out due to stress, both hydric stress and nutrient stress. Um, cacti and succulents do sometimes show some very nice characteristics when they're uh, not fed or given tons of water. For example, Copiapoa shows that beautiful white farina that they're famous for and things like um, Lophophora start turning blue instead of green. But it's all depending on your personal preference, uh, the way you culture your own plants. So just do some research and try different things. We're going off the beaten path a little bit here because I'm going to show you something that I found uh, maybe three years ago. And I come visit it every time because I feel like it's like a little Easter egg. It's hidden away, so I guess not a lot of people know about it. But it's one of my favorite plants in the whole entire garden. And it's been, it's been outgrown by the euphorbia, but there it is. It is a Melocactus matansanus. And he's just chugging along here. I don't know if they planted him or maybe a seed fell here years ago. But every time I come, I visit it because it is one of my favorite plants. And it is hidden away, very far away from the path. And it is now being overgrown by euphorbiaceae. As you can see there. Check out the bark on this thing. It's beautiful, huh? Depending on where you live, uh, you might be able to get away with using more organic content uh, than some of us who live in higher humidity climates. Um, so you do have to just try different things out for yourself and see exactly what works best for you. There is really not uh, any one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to plants because number one, our, our climates all over the world are completely different from one another. And number two, and most importantly, plants adapt. You know, plants are able to survive and even thrive in a wide variety of different soils and different uh, moisture exposure settings and even sunlight exposure we see that if you expose some plants to less sunlight they don't die but they just start stretching they, they tr try to find a way to survive and a way to thrive so that means even if your soil structure is not 100% correct your plants might still be cool with it <laughs> they may still grow and thrive and be happy in it so um, I always say that you should look at your plants and you should let them be the judge of uh, what you're doing But by all means experiment try different things and Don't take it negatively when someone does something differently than you because I have also experienced that negative reaction from people that Want to tell me that I have to use organic content and they've also gone as far as saying that my plants look horrible and you know They've gotten pretty nasty and it's pretty ridiculous. I mean, we can all do things differently. It's okay. I mean, I actually, I've learned um, more from growers that do things differently than I do than from growers that do things exactly the same as me because if you do the same thing as me, then what am I going to learn from you? But anyway, that's just an outlook. Um, if you have any comments, guys, like as always, drop them in the comment section. If you like this sort of garden tour when we went into oh, soil, um let me know in the comment section and if you haven't subscribed go ahead and subscribe look me up on instagram east coast kamanchaka i give up updates on my collection there and i'm actually more active there uh and as always 
Catch you on the next one.